So over the course of our how-to videos, we've gone over quite a bit regarding our plastic miniatures. From the basis of snipping them off their plastic sprue and gluing them together to give our warriors form, and then the arduous journey of painting them into something respectable for the tabletop, we've done quite a bit. Yet for some people, they are not just content to leave their models sitting on the table for display. Sometimes they need to see action on the battlefield. From the basic infantry used by the Imperial Guard, their special forces, a large variety of tanks, powered armor super warriors, some with very big guns, and so-called demon engines alongside mechanical insectoid death constructs, Warhammer has many models that can reach the table and make not only for some awesome scenery, but also a neat casual game that can see dozens of models clash on the table, vying for victory. So today, in our episode of How To, we will be taking our plastic warriors to the battlefield to demonstrate how a game of Warhammer 40k 8th edition works. What you will need to play a game of Warhammer 40k outside your models are... Dice. Lots of six-sided dice. A tape measure so you can properly check distance and range for the various things in the game. And your army's codex. A book which contains all the rules for your army that you might be running. In this case, we got the Chaos Space Marine Codex. It should also be noted that Warhammer 40k is a game of I go, you go. This means one player does all their phases before their turn is then passed on to the next player. As you can see in this sped up video, the Chaos Space Marines do all their movement, shooting, and assaulting before the Imperial Guard player gets to do the same. Speaking of phases, now let's get down to movement. For movement, determine which unit you want to move first. Once that's decided, check the value of how far that model can move. For our Chaos Space Marines, they're capable of moving 6 inches, though there are other units that can move faster or slower than them, such as vehicles. Moving our troops up once they have reached their position, you can then opt to advance. An action where you roll a d6 which determines the additional movement that unit gets, but you do give up the shooting and assault phase to do so. Now if our troops are locked in combat, do not fear, you can still move them, but however, like advancing, that unit may no longer shoot or charge in that turn, though that combat does end with them, leaving the opposing unit vulnerable to shooting. Once those actions are complete on whether you advance, fall back, move, or do not move, choose another unit. Do note however your movement phase you must remain 1 inch away from models and other units, and you must maintain a unit coherency of 2 inches. Furthermore, outside certain units that might have the fly keyword such as our Chaos Raptors representing their jump packs, Units cannot move through other units. To do so, you need to move that unit which is in the way first, before that other unit can take up a position. Some armies in the 40k universe have psychers, something you find akin to being a very dangerous wizard in a fantasy setting, and it's the psychic phase where they get to shine with various powers. For the powers that your psyker gets, you must meet or exceed on a roll of 2d6 for it to go off, however, there is a catch. If you roll double ones for your Psyker, they take D3 mortal wounds which represents a sort of negative feedback as your Psyker delves too deep into the power of the warp. Furthermore, your power does not go off. On double sixes or box cars, you also suffer D3 mortal wounds, but instead, your power does go off. Do note, if your Psyker gets killed during this phase, they will explode which causes D6 mortal wounds to all units within 6 inches of your Psyker, so do be careful of where they are. Finally, an opposing Psyker within 24 inches of another Psyker can attempt to shut down the other's power, though only one Psyker may be chosen if you have multiple which are in range of that target. If the opposing player rolls below or meets the value of the casting Psyker, that power will still go off. If the opposing player succeeds, however, the power is negated and it does not go off. So do always note where the position of hostile Psykers are if you do want to get your powers off. Now that ends our psychic phase, so let's get on to the big things of the 40k universe, which are the guns. And I mean, a lot of guns. Now the main attraction to some of the 40k universe is the shooting phase, where you get to use all the big guns your army has. Shooting is fairly straightforward. For your selected unit, decide who you want to fire it on, decide which guns you want to use, and roll to hit. In the case of a Chaos Space Marine who has a ballistic skill of 3+, that means they hit on 3s and above. Once you have resolved your shooting attacks against the target, it's time to roll the wound. 
Here we see a bulk gun has a strength of 4. Against an ordinary human has a toughness of 3, that means you need 3 or above to wound them. Now once you've rolled all your wounds, the opposing player needs to make saves. Once those are done, the player who is taking damage chooses which models to remove. Do note certain weapons can reduce an armor save that is found in the weapon's profile. That means if a guardsman has a 5 plus save and gets hit by a minus 1 AP weapon, that gets reduced to 6 plus. If they were to get hit by a minus 2 AP weapon, that save becomes plus 7, but since there is no 7 on a D6, you simply do not get to make a save, at which point the model just gets immediately removed. Things like tanks are capable of firing all their guns, but if you have pistols or grenades, you must decide on where you want to use them over your other range weapons. For a Chaos Space Marine for example, you can A. Fire his bolt gun, B. Shoot his pistol, or C. Throw a grenade. In the shooting phase, units can also split their fire. This is useful for squads with heavy weapons or vehicles with multiple guns, so you can have one squad shoot at an infantry unit and their heavy guns shoot at tanks. Do note in 40k, you generally can't be a crew master by firing on units which are in close combat with your own troops unless there's an army rule that states so. Models in units also require line of sight to fire. The guardsmen in this image cannot see the Chaos Space Marines behind the Rhino, so they cannot shoot at that squad. But on sight lines, the player who loses models can choose those who are out of sight rather than pulling those who are at the front or are visible to the enemy. Now that covers our movement, psychic, and shooting phase, but next week we're going to be covering the assault phase, the morale phase, and also how you build your army list. Be sure to stay tuned as How To will have more awesome content coming your way.